await questions from the, from the audience. Um, I am uh, Castillo from Granada, Spain. Uh, congratulations for your presentation. I, I have uh, one question and a comment to Dr. Sullivan's presentation. I agree 95% with your, with your talk, but there is one thing in which, in which I disagree, is that all calories are the same, and you also mentioned it. All calories are not the same. Uh, 500 calories or 100 calories or 1,000 calories is the same. Coming from fruit are not the same as the same amount of calories coming from bakery or from um, bread. And the difference regards to the effect of that those calories or th that food has on blood glucose levels and then on insulin secretion. The higher the amount of, of insulin secretion, the higher the amount of fat is produced. So it's not a question of calories only, it's also a question of what's happened with those uh, calories. And incidentally, alcohol does not enhance blood glucose level. It decreases blood glucose level because it depress neoglucogenesis. So particularly those calories coming from alcohol, is, if you just eat, al drink alcohol, are in the, in the opposite way as the same amount of calories coming for, for instance from glucose. Do you agree with that? Um, I'm so sorry. I know where you're coming from, but I suppose this, the evidence I'm presenting is population-based. And on a population base, you know, calories will be equal because we're just looking at such huge numbers. And um, I understand that when you're talking about a food, the effect of food in terms of GI and things like that, it will behave differently because fiber will have an effect in terms of the body's response. But I, I do think that the basis of nutrition is that well, calories are equal at the end of the day, particularly with this sort of data, epidemiological data. But I think maybe on an experimental level, you may find differences. No, 2,000 calories. 2,000 calories, <laughs> 2000 calories. yeah. It's the same. Even if for population, the a standard Western diet or a Mediterranean diet having the same amount of calories. Or for instance, Japanese diet with the same amount of calories as for American diet do, do not have the same effect. I, I was just gonna say, I mean, there will be other nutrients in, in, the, in the diet that will affect metabolism, of course there will be. Um, but I, I do think at the end of the day, the calories are gonna be pretty similar. For Uh, okay, um, they are equal from the energetic metabolist point of view. We are just judging the energy they are giving to our body. Of course, when you are going to a more detailed uh, analysis, things change. But you know, the problem now is that we are going, we are uh, uh, pushing people too hard to orthorexia. People are eating food, are not uh, eating nutrients, I, I think that we are confusing them too much by giving them all kinds of details, fiber, antioxidants, and from this, I'm not sure that they, they will uh, eat more healthy. Or maybe they will get obsessed by all kinds of analysis, what I have in the plate. Uh, there will be no pleasure anymore. The hedonic uh, part of eating will go away sooner or later. Maybe I can add. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Food is much more than simply calories. Maybe I can add from our side that we are starting to do a small study on testing the GI of beer, also non-alcoholic beer. And I think you have to take into account, I, I, com I agree with your comment, perhaps not all calories are equal. You also should take into account whether they are solid or liquid because that's one of the things we are suspecting from the sugar-sweetened beverages or the sugar-containing beverages, that our satiety system is not working that good because it's fluid and too quick, for example. And that may play a role somehow with alcohol as well. It would be interesting to study this to see what, what component would be more important. 
They are saying, uh, eat your calories, don't drink them. Not, I was not respe uh, exactly referring to beer. Um, you know that there is very trendy to do smoothies from fruits and vegetables. It's healthier to eat them raw or like a salad instead of making them uh, a smoothie, at least as long as we have teeth. <laughs> okay, please. Um, <coughs> just a... Uh, a personal experience question. It's maybe very logical what I will share, but just wanted to share it anyway. Um, personally, drinking some beer, a couple of glasses, eating carbohydrates. I look at the weight that I had, then I stop drinking the beer, but still eat the carbohydrates. I hardly lose any weight. If, however, I keep drinking the same beer, but I drop the carbohydrates and eat vegetables with fish or vegetables with meat, I lose weight. Is this, does that make sense or not? <laughs> and does it apply just to me or is that the way it, the, the, the system works? Um, um, I mean, to be honest, you'd have to do a full analysis and just really work out what calories you're consuming. And um, I would imagine that it's not because you're putting beer in or out of your diet that you're gaining or losing weight. It's got to be complete, you know, that it's the holistic approach you've got to take. It's whether you've done any more physical activity because, I mean, you know, calories in is equal to cal calories out. That's how you, you, you balance your energy equation. And it's, although it's very simplistically shown in those diagrams, and I agree, it's completely simplistically shown, that really is the basis of it. And I agree to the last speaker in terms of calories in theory may act differently, but I think overall calories are calories and whether you eat them with fiber is going to affect satiation. Whether you take them as a fluid, it'll affect your satiation. But at the end of the day, it won't affect your total calories probably. It only affects your behavior. Can I add something? To answer the both of you, because I generally agree what, with what you said. And I think that uh, this was the main goal of the PREDIMED study, because the PREDIMED study, uh, when they um, suggested to follow a Mediterranean diet, it was a Mediterranean diet, a high-fat diet. So it was, wow, a high-fat diet uh, as an intervention study. But in fact, uh, the, the calories were coming from the monounsaturated fatty acids, polyunsaturated fatty acids. So it depends from where you take the calories, and this is true. And the, the results from my study was saying that if you take the beer in the context of a healthy diet, this beer, however, and uh, of course you take this beer with a, a consciousness like a, a moderate consumption, uh, uh, but even constant, uh, it's giving you some uh, health uh, um, effects, healthy effects. It's not, it's not just a matter of alcohol, because alcohol is giving calories, but it's also having uh, healthy effects. And um, as I said, a lot of meta-analysis are, are saying this. So this uh, demonization of the one single food, uh, healthy, so you live forever if you eat uh, these pills uh, or vegetables or fruits, and if you eat uh, meat, uh, you die, or if you drink alcohol. <laughs> it's not this, it's, it's the overall uh, it's, you have to take into account. And in these, calories are the same because it, I mean uh, it depends on the what you are eating if you're eating uh, 4,000 calories per day or 2,000 this is the main uh, uh, difference of the we had recently a meta-analysis about uh, which diet works best uh, hypoglucid uh, hypolipid something like that they were co compared different type of diets they were all equal the calories counted i think the difference is somewhere else is the um, how much people are um, going to adhere to this diet this is the difference but actually there are just calories say it's all down to appetite control mm -hmm. so if you go on a very high protein diet reduces your appetite but you actually look at the calories it'll be similar to, to somebody's on a calorie controlled diet versus a high fiber diet at the end of the day it's it is calories it's how you can achieve your weight loss by how you manipulate your diet how you play with your calories okay
to continue this subject. After adjusting the other factors, I mean, healthy diet, calories, age, uh, everything, can you say moderate consumption of beer can also decrease BMI? Can you say this? Sudan, please. In the end, that it will decrease the uh, BMI per se, no. So in which, uh, how, how can you explain it? I think that the uh, food intake was different. Maybe this kind of people keep uh, feeling full after drinking uh, two glasses of beer are not uh, going and eat some fast food, some, uh, I don't know, fatty appetizers or things like that. In the frame of uh, my country where uh, we have this particularity, I think, uh, regarding especially with West, especially uh, the relation with Western countries, the most uh, of the meals are cooked home. Uh, we, of course, people are eating outside, but cooked meal, cooked meals are uh, the main uh, component of the diet. Fast food is quite small. Okay. Uh, what about thermogenic response? I mean, when you drink beer, the, there is a thermogenic response, so it's increased the metabolic rate. So what can you say about it? Does it have any effect? I don't think that's uh, would you please repeat the thermogenic uh, regarding beer consumption? Yeah. Any alcohol? Any alcohol will any increase alcohol, your thermogenic yeah. Yes, response. I don't think there are differences between beer and spirits or wine, of course. In the same equivalent. Ah, yes, 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 the concentration. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You've seen the differences with the glasses and with the quantities, yes. Another question in the middle of the... Thank you. My name is Kanem from Nigerian Brewers, um, Heineken Company. I think I find something very common about um, all the presentations, and I think it's good for the industry to have scientific basis to be able to say what beer can do, and um, compared to alternative um, beverages because sometimes that's really what the issue is that the beer consumer or the beer maker cannot say as um, confidently as the wine maker or the um, spirit maker what its product can do or not do. So I, I, I thank the panel and the, um, for, and the organizers of the conference for this. My issue comes back to um, maybe a combination of um, of Edith's presentation and, um, and Corinna's own, um, about the fact that there's a difference in dietary habits, somewhat, um, if of the beer drinker compared to um, the, um, the drinker of some other beverage. And the question for me is, therefore, what? So what do we do? What does the industry do? Is it, you, you say to yourself, okay, well, I can have evidence to say, hi, hey, it's not me, it's what else you drink, or what else you eat. It's not me, or do you say to uh, yourself, it's time for the industry to go into also educating people on what are the best things to consume at whatever time? Because it also comes down to what is the best, or what is the most, um, the time at which your beverage is most consumed, because what you now eat along with it would, um, would, would show. So if I take a combination of both questions, the both um, presentations, question is, yeah, great facts, now what? Well, uh, okay, I can answer. Uh, you said right. I mean, uh, it's a, as I said before, it's not a matter of alcohol. It's a matter of how you drink. And uh, according to the data, uh, our, the, the Italian way, especially the Southern, uh, to consume alcohol uh, um, is different than uh, any other part of Europe because we drink alcohol mostly in the meals. And so it's difficult that during a meal you take 10 beers. From the, the, the producer point of view, I mean, I understand that you want to sell more, so uh, this is, a, this is a, I mean, you have to Im implement a strategy to sell, but at the same time, not encourage the binge be eating, uh, drinking, but rather uh, the moderate consumption uh, um, in the meals, for example, that's, Generally, it's like, uh, I mean, you are not staying there counting the number of beers or wine or whatever. You just eat and, and drink as a part of the meal and uh, uh, you automatically stop. Like, you're not, because the goal is not to drink. 
it's, it's like there to enjoy the, the meal. So um, the point is uh, maybe for younger people, because uh, it's especially in Europe, uh, of course, uh, uh, it's increasing the, 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 the consumption among youngers, and it's not in the meals, but just like for social life or something like that. So it's not easy to, to, to answer, like to have a strategy plan already like that. But I think that the, the point is, is this, that however, especially for the adults, encourage uh, to consume the, the, the alcohol uh, during the meals, which automatically will be moderate unless you don't spend uh, three hours eating, so maybe you have like <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and maybe I can add on that because I agree, and I, I know, for example, here in Belgium, for own experience, drinking beer with a, with a, with a meal is common. Um, uh, the lower alcohol percentages will probably help as well. We heard this morning, I think Professor Witte talked about, you know, tasty beer with lower alcohol percentages because that's the calories. So uh, apart from that, that's clear. It's the, it's the alcohol which causes the calories. So that is, that is a point of attention, I think. Um, uh, you also said something about the, in the industry educating. No, it's not for the industry because... Uh, you always have the question mark, what do they want to sell us something? It's not the industry who's uh, meant to educate the consumers. However, you can do more for the um, no alcoholic beer. I think uh, this is a niche that uh, can expand very much. Uh, in Europe also, uh, we ha I, have this, I had the surprise that it's not very popular. Uh, they more and more, but not enough, and maybe, I don't know, enriched beers, a, a, a big quality of beer is, that is natural, is uh, the the, uh, the basis of beer, are everything is natural, without additives, uh, with the exception of some Belgian beers with have different kind of things inside, <laughs> but in this uh, contemporary world, everything uh, has to be natural, the consumers want natural drinks, Beer is a natural drink. Uh, but I would like to add something about like non-alcoholic beers. It's not that if, if you promote non-alcoholic beers, so we can take 20 beers per day just because it's without alcohol. I mean, uh, even if we drink 10 liters of water, we die. So what? Uh, don't drink any more water. I think the key is the moderation, not about the alcohol. Uh, yeah. And I just said the key is also to educate the consumer, yeah, and it is the role of not just the industry, but the industry will have a role of it, but it's, um, it's how to get the messages to the consumer to understand it, to understand what moderation means, so that they can make a choice at the end of the day. Well, um, we now have to, to go to the lunch and, and to have a drink. So, <laughs> uh, we will just start, we will start uh, a quarter to, to two, so we have one hour to, for lunch. <laughs>